Hello, and for the last time, good evening and welcome to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral. Uh, the last time this week, I must be more uh, specific, uh, because uh, it is, of course, the eve of the final day of Royal Ascot 2023. A red-hot Saturday awaits us after some scintillating performances uh, on day four. And uh, where did Shaquille come from? God knows. I mean, uh, in his, uh, his namesake sport, of course, uh, never, uh, never travelling is a, is a good thing, isn't it? But he came from... The, uh, the clouds to beat little Big Bear. Tahira rattled down the outside to uh, stamp her class on the, uh, the coronation while giving Remarque a little bit of a bump uh, on the way. And there were some other uh, cracking performances, including King of Steel giving that derby form another right old boost. Royal Ascot 2023 keeps rolling on to Saturday. Doesn't get any easier though, of course. We've got big field sprints for you. We've got the Chesham, which is often the hardest two-year-old race of the week. And we've got the unique contest that is the Queen Alexandra closing off the card. How have you done this week? Let us know in the chat box uh, and uh, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Now, one more day to go then at Royal Ascot 2023. Pretty sure 2023 is uh, how many horses uh, we've seen run uh, today on the uh, on the straight track at, uh, at Ascot. Uh, and I'm turning to uh, to Paul Keeley again to say, uh, Keels, um, if you just want to if you want to make your way over to that side, mm. a little bit further over there, yeah. and we'll yeah. all do our thing over here, yeah, if that's okay. Actually, yeah, and I'll be tailed off. And you can be just be down, like the, stretch, down the middle just... of the chat. But um, let's, look, there's been some, there was some cracking performances today. To hear a, looked a, a really classy uh, filly. I mean, have you ever seen a horse in a Group 1 sprint give that much, uh, no, that much ground away no, and, no, and, and come home like, and bolt up um, and come um, around? You see horses get held up, but I mean, that's deliberately. I mean, he just completely blew the start, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, to do that, he's obviously really good, isn't he? Do you think it, do you think it actually helped him the way they went off a bit quick in front? Or, or yeah, is he even I mean, they, they, he might have got, they might have gone off too quick, but I mean, he's he's done it racing prominently, prominently, and now he's done it racing for miles off the pace. So he obviously is a very, very good horse, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, you know, it was a cracking day's racing. To hear her has come, you know, a circle to field. Now, the one thing about, you know, was, we were just saying that uh, on the round track, anything that's racing on the rail just doesn't win. Yeah. Uh, and she came round the outside, but she came round the outside off what was a really steady gallop. So it was a good, a good performance to quick it up past them like that. She's obviously very, very good. And, and now we know she handles any ground. Um, it'd be interesting to see if she goes and takes on the Colts uh, at any point. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's plenty of options open to her. And she could obviously stay stay against her own sex, but, you know, why not have a go? Makes it also, uh, obviously, the second as well. I mean, that, she, she looked fantastic on debut last year. Mm. Okay. She looked fantastic at Newbury. Nothing yeah. happened in the, in the Guineas, but suddenly she's into the mix yeah, now as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, well, she, she, she wouldn't have won, but, I mean, she'd have been a little bit closer, wouldn't she? And she's obviously very lightly raced and is definitely worth another crack, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. So. Um, and also, she's uh, I think one of her relatives running tonight at uh, Goodwood as well. So uh, it's not. I, I like to see those those, those bloodlines continued. And obviously, mm. that is the same same with Tahira, same with Remarque. Um, other uh, uh, things to mention: um, Joseph O'Brien rattled the crossbar with two you back the other day on the round track. Rattled the crossbar with one I back the other day, and then the, the one that neither of us backed came careering down the middle. And the beat the one that I'd backed at thirty three to one. Yeah, yeah. And went off fifteen to two. And. I thought was winning, and I was getting really excited, and then it just went. Yeah, <laughs> I was devastated. It's been the most frustrating uh, week for me. Uh, even Harry Brown in the last, uh, he just ha just happened to be on the wrong side, but he absolutely destroyed his side. Mm. And just keep an eye out for him. That money's coming back uh, without a shadow of a doubt. He'll win. He'll win a nice prize somewhere. He might win it. I'd imagine he'll win at Goodwood. Yeah, there's going to be quite a lot of, um, well, oh, there's, there's that three-year-old sprint at um, Six Furlong race at Newmarket as well, isn't there? Is that a good one at the July yeah, Festival? Yeah, I think, it's a five, I think it's a five furlong also. Do you? Yeah. Right, okay. yeah. Mind you, I mean, he did see it out well enough, it's worth, mm. you know, he, he has one over six as well, hasn't he, I think, so. Interesting. Yeah. We'll, have to, yeah. we'll have to compare notes for, I mean, there's going to be so many horses that are going Oh, to absolutely, yeah, you know, I'm you know, going to have to make myself watch all the races again and again and again. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Uh, just, we'll, just, we'll, just several hours of massacres. We'll dig a few out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll watch all, you know, all the painful memories flooding back again. Like, you know, I might leave it a couple of days, take the weekend off, but I'll be back there on Monday having a look. There we go. You can't keep a good I've man down. I've never looked forward so much to six fifteen on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, but uh, I just, um, I think, have we got, have we got a, a second pundit for the evening? 
No, we haven't. Uh, if anyone's seen a seagull flying about, give us a shout, <laughs> won't you? Uh, David Stevens, um, anyone? Okay, look out! Look out your window. See if he's uh, see if he's uh, if he's banging at the pane of glass. No, no sign of him. Well, you've forgotten us. No, right? nothing here. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't know what's happened to him. Um, when you, anyway, David Stevens, you you have to do, mate. Uh, <laughs> how did you enjoy day uh, day four? Yeah, lots of filling to be done tonight. I say I when you introduced the start of the show by saying welcome to the last ever in the know. I can assure people we will be back for the coral eclipse in the know. Um, I thought it was a day full of talking points. Just on the Shaquille thing, um, Ruby Walsh going through it on ITV afterwards suggested that the sectional timings made it, you know, they didn't really go that fast up front to actually credit to Ashim Murphy for not panicking and giving the horse time to get back in the race and then going on to score well. So he is clearly some horse. That was a lovely thing to see. Julie Camacho, yeah, Bally Doyle have had plenty of winners this week. They'll probably have more. So that was one definitely for the, the smaller teams. Uh, and also a very good result for the bookmakers. But the day started with the Dettori winner. And, and once again, these accumulators this week. I mean, I saw the, the liabilities after that first race. I mean, they are eye-watering, these Dettori liabilities. He's got four rides tomorrow. And then, honestly, we will be glad to see the back of him at this place. Uh, he obviously made it a double. Of the rest, Tahira, the way Dermot Welch spoke afterwards, she's now going to be put away for an autumn campaign. Whether that means Breeders' Cup or whether that means the QE2, he also suggested she could step up in trip. So... Shame we're probably not going to see her for the next couple of months at least, but she won a pretty muddling coronation, but she won it very well. And we get a lot of stick, mainly from the man who hasn't showed up tonight, about our price boost. But uh, last night, I think four of the five came in, an Irish train winner of the Albany, uh, De Tory to ride a winner, De Tory to ride two winners, in fact. And both Tahira and King of Steel came in at the price boost. So, Mr. Siegel, if you're listening, price boosts aren't all that bad. And on the subject of King of Steel, kills maybe this year's derby, is actually going to turn out okay. Uh, maybe it's very. Like Piero winning. I think. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. The, the the figure was fantastic. I thought it was a great field going into it. it the, the form looks absolutely bomb. Yeah, it does now. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no arguing at all. Um, like to see King still have another go after that. He was very impressive, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we'll have a we'll have a cracking King George potentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I was I was uh, hoping and waiting for the blowout. Uh, having laid him win and place, and uh, I never had a moment's doubt about what was happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As soon as he jumped out, perfect position. But um, just a quick word on Tahira. Now, this is gonna, this is gonna be. It might sound a bit mad here, uh, uh, David, but um, Ark. I mean, she's she's by Sayuni. Uh, she's from the family of Tanawa, of course. Uh, Sayuni's provided a an Ark winner. The uh, her half sister was placed in the race. So we is that is that madness? Maybe maybe this year, maybe next. I don't know if it's madness. Such, I mean, I say Dermot Well certainly intimated she could step up in trip. From that, I kind of took it to be a mile and a quarter. But who knows if she's if she's that good? As Kill said, she's ground versatile now. Uh, if you're watching Aga Khan or Dermot Weld, let us know. Um, but talking about those price boosts, I should give tonight. Damn, I suppose damn it, damn um, it. they're not they're not watching. <laughs> they're not watching. <laughs> they're not watching. Well, if, if Tom Siegel's watching, Tom. I'm watching. I'm listening and watching. Oh, hey, there he is. Oh, look let at this. Just give these, if, let me uh, just give these price. Let me just give these price boosts. Four out of the five came in last night, Mr. Baby. Siegel. Say again. All right, Tom. Hey, Tom. If you're going to come in late, let, every, let just just chill your beat. Honestly, Shaquille got going quicker than you have tonight. Come on, like, David. Give us some price boosts. <laughs> in the Hardwick, uh, we'll talk about obviously this one. Huckham. Is five to two, but we're three to one, and we've got two fairly warm favourites in the opening two races tomorrow: pearls and rubies. And Covey, one of those two to win, even money from eight to eleven. As always, twenty quid max for the duration of this live show. Over to you, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I had Wi-Fi issues at this end, David. As you can see by my hair, look, it's all standing on end. I've been fiddling around with <laughs> Wi-Fi boxes for the last half an hour trying to get them to work. I don't know what's going on, but I finally managed it. And if Tahira wins the arc, then I'll be, I'll be, I'll be joining you in the studio, Ross. Yeah. Blimey, I'm totally unimpressed with her today. I don't know what everyone else thought. I missed that bit. <laughs> I thought she couldn't win that, and she isn't. You know, I don't, I don't think they're very good. I don't. I'm, I'm not, I'll leave it to you, boys. Completely <laughs> 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 rubbish, Grace. I've, I've never seen someone lose faith so quickly in what they were, that, what they were saying there, uh, Tom. But it's good to have you here. Um, uh, next time, uh, you know, d don't, um, 
don't put don't put a knife in the uh, the plug hole. I think is the uh, is the key thing. No, that looks what's, that's probably what happened. To be honestly, yeah. to be true. But oh, you wouldn't have Wi-Fi problems if you did come into the studio, though, Tom. So it's true. I would have problems. I'd have to sit next to you boys. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is a fair <laughs> point. But uh, like I said, it'd be it'd be nice to see you because um, has it been three years or is it two that? years that we've been doing this show? Absolutely, Three. just miles too long as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, mean, general, I haven't tipped a winner since we started it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, um, sign up to Members Club. <laughs> Right, OK, let's get uh, stuck into uh, the final date of, uh, of Royal Ascot, uh, 2023 then. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's simple when you look at tomorrow, isn't it? Uh, the winners jump out at you. Uh, we start off with the, uh, the Chesham Stakes, where 17 of them uh, line up here for the, uh, the final two-year-old race. Of the week, Pearls and Rubies is 15 to 8 favourite. Content is 6 to 1. La Guarida is 7 to 1. Golden Mind 11 to 1. Sayadati Sadati uh, is 11 to 1 as well. Uh, 12 to 1. Namonte uh, Matnuk is 12 to 1. Snellen is 12 to 1. And it is bigger prices the rest. And I'm starting to read those names, Tom, and I think I'm getting a little bit crazy. It's almost, it's almost the Cheshire, it, 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 it might as well be virtual racing to my head sometimes because we've barely seen any of these horses. Uh, some of them are stepping up from five furlongs to seven furlongs. Some of them will bolt up and go into decent, half decent group races. Some of them will be running off 65 Catrick in, in 12 months' time. Um, I don't know about you, the two year races this week have been difficult, but this is always the most difficult to, uh, to my eyes. Um, and normally when I set up a race like that, you go, I really fancy one. So let's see what you think of the session tomorrow. I'm, I'm with you. I mean, these two year old races have been possible, haven't they? Uh, I mean, well, the, the one today was fine. The, the punters seemed to find it. I don't know if it was Frankie Factor or what, but I didn't really fancy the uh, Donna Crow Brian Philly. I um, not really fancy many this week, but. Uh, Look, it's another great race. I think the one thing you've got to say is Aidan O'Brien's two year olds have been running really well this week. They always do. River Tiber, he's had two horses win on the wrong side in His Majesty and Alabama as well. So, what's not to like? She's bred to stay at least seven furlongs. I know she only won over five, but it was. Sort of, I think that was probably the last race she could get, it, get into her before she could come here. I think she's the one to beat Pearls and Rubies. Content. Uh, is just as well bred, isn't she? I mean, she's Galileo Adameka's angel, isn't she? So she might even be better bred. She looked. At, I, I watched her race because I was interested because she was running and another one of the O'Brien's running. She looked up quite small, but she finished really strongly. Don't know the don't know the strength of that form. LaGuardia is by my old friend New Bay. We know what he does at, at, at Ascot, and he, she's probably got the best figures. But the one I liked a bit, Ross was Snellen. Snellen for Gavin Cromwell. We used to, we normally see Gavin winning uh, Cheltenham races, didn't we? We talk about Gavin non stop in, in champion hurdles and races around Cheltenham and Grand Nationals, Vanillier and the likes. But he's had one run at Ascot, one runner at Ascot, and he won a juvenile race, the Queen Mary with Quick Susie. Mm. Uh, th this is uh, another uh, juvenile of his. Uh, we know she's staying seven furlongs. She hung right across the track when she won. She had an absolute ton in hand. The, tr the, uh, the time was good. She'd already won a barrier trial, beating loads of Joseph O'Brien's horses. So she's got a bit of experience. She, we know she saves the trip. I think her form is at least as good as Pearls and Rubies and Contents. So why not go for the Gavin Cromwell angle at, at double the price? That was my thinking. I could see Golden Mind finishing off. She, he's a perfect powers half-brother, isn't he? So I could see him finishing off well in the style of many winners this week. So... Uh, I mean, obviously, I think Pearls and Ruby's probably the one to beat, but I'm going to back Snellen. Yeah, yeah. That, to be fair, I mean, after I set up this uh, race rather dismissively, I guess, that Golden Mine was the only horse in this race that I, I was really impressed with last time out, and I thought, oh, crikey, OK. And they said immediately afterwards, we're going to go for the Chesham. Obviously, he's got the pedigree, though, he's, and the run style and the, and the yard and everything, basically, to, to give him a big chance. He's drawing 15, though, so God knows whether that's going to be good. If it's a 20 runner handicap, it's fine. If it's... Every other race seems to come down the middle, uh, Keels. But look, quite frankly, there's no point worrying about that. Um, no, there isn't, because they're going to throw more water on it tonight, obviously. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, have, they basically have to. It's been baking up today, isn't it? So, uh, And you, you don't know what effects that's going to have. Uh, you know, so you, know, you just have to take your chance and hope you're on the right side, don't you? Three fillies at the head of a market in a race that isn't won that often by fillies, although the last two who do so were trained by Aidan O'Brien in the first two in the betting. 
Um, I came down to, uh, without any confidence at all, Lagarida and Goldmine myself. Lagarida uh, won the second time at Goodwood. It was only a seven runner maiden, but second, third, and fourth have all won since, all won next time out. And yeah, I like the way, the way Goldmine um, finished off uh, at Leicester last time. And obviously, you know, it's, it's not brilliant form by any stretch of the imagination, but the extra furlong is definitely going to suit. Yeah. Again, and, and, and I mean, this race in particular isn't about form, is it? It's about pedigree, it's about promise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, which makes it, like I said, pretty difficult. But um, at La Guarida is, uh, is 7 to 1. Uh, I keep wanting to call it La Guardia because uh, I've got, I don't know, airports, airports on the mind. But uh, Pearls and Rubies is 15 to 8 favourite, uh, though, here. here. Uh, from a nice family, as you would expect, uh, given connections. But every year they lump onto a, uh, a, a Ballydoyal Chesham representative here, uh, David. Um, most of the time they get it right, to be fair. Last year didn't work out. Yeah. What do you reckon about this year? No, you're right. More often than not, particularly in this race, they do get it right. Um, I like Golden Mind as well. Good to firm that win at Leicester as well. And the other one I liked at a price, with four places each way here, the other one I liked at a price was the Yarmouth winner, Lightning Leo, Archie Watson's horse. Again, it was good to firm that day. We've seen two-year-olds improve quite dramatically for one run in some of the races this week. So they'd be my two against the O'Brien pair at the head of the betting. But if you do fancy the Bally Doyle pair, a reverse exactor in this race is a subject of our first price boost, and that is seven to one from six to one. A Bally Doyle reverse exactor. Well, fair enough. I mean, it's a, it's a bold shout, isn't it? It is a bold shout. Seven one out from six to one. I don't know. Stick a one before it or a zero after it. I might think, I'm consider having an exactor in the show. But uh, I, you can yeah, tell. You, might, you can tell we had a bad night well, last night. These price boosts, can't you? Yeah. The worst of the week, Mr. Stevens. Yeah, which, um, again, means it's going to come in, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, uh, Pearls and Ruby say yeah, a fairly short price favourite. Loads of horses are going to improve here. I tentatively quite like the way uh, Golden Mine finished off last time out, but it is a difficult race. Uh, Keely, you're tiptoeing in with... Yeah, tiptoeing with Lagarida and Golden Mind, but it will be at the very, very low end of my staking scale. OK, there you go. Um, Mr Siegel? Snellen, for me. I think, I think she's going to run really well. Okay, there you go. And yeah, David Stevens, yeah. um, David Stevens, lumping on the exactor. Yes, the Golden Mind Lightning Leo exactor. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, <laughs> disagreements in the uh, the Coral Camp. Uh, that's uh, that's for sure. Uh, moving on then. Uh, seven furlongs uh, are for two year olds is now seven furlongs for three year olds in the shape of the Jersey Stakes. A, a group three here for uh, a normal. Uh, nice mix of horses, often stepping up from handicaps and listed company sprinters trying to turn into seven furlong horses, horses who didn't get home uh, in the uh, in the guineas, dropping back in trip, uh, horses who, um, uh, quite frankly, they, they thought, why not? Let's see if they, they like seven furlongs at Ascot. Uh, but uh, if anyone can uh, get a horse like Covey to uh, to improve to this level uh, after that handicap win last time on off a mark of 100, it is, of course, at the Gosdens and the Tory. But two to one, again, short enough. The Antarctic's been well backed over the past uh, 24 hours or so is 4 to 1. Olivia Miranda is 6 to 1. Emphjar is 7 to 1. Holloway Boy 10s. Uh, Kwashamar is 11s with Mysterious Knight. At uh, 20s flight plan and bigger prices the rest. And uh, yeah, another short price at uh, Gosden de Tori and Judmont favoured as well, which is going to attract a lot of uh, casual uh, viewers, albeit um, uh, he's, uh, he's by Frankel. He was very impressive last time out. The form's not too bad. Um, but th there's two ways you can normally go with this race, uh, Keels, every single year it's your up in trip or you're up in grade or it's the ones who've not quite made it in group one company yeah absolutely um yeah bookmakers have been running scared of frankie all week you could see why after yesterday and today but i mean i think covey is the most vile price of all his uh, runners i think it's an absolutely awful price don't get me wrong he was really impressive at haydock but it was off a mark of 90 mm -hmm. uh, in a handicap and the they fifth, let him have it as well, didn't they? They let him have it. The fifth and sixth have been well thrashed since, uh, beaten similar distances. And the way he raced at Haydock is not the way Ascot races tend to be won, is it? Like, you know what I mean? Going fast from the front now. And it's not just uh, Haydock, that's how he, he won his last three as well. Yeah, so exactly. He yeah, yeah, so he's a, front, he's a front runner. Obviously, Frankie's brilliant from the front, but it's, just, it's, it's not going to be easy. And he has to improve by quite some margin. Mm -hmm. He went up £10 for that race, but he still rated £12 below uh, the Antarctic and, and £9 below Olivia Moralda, to whom he is giving £3. 
And I think Olivia Morales does the bet. She's going to love getting a fast pace to chase. I and mean, look what she did at Epsom last time when she thrashed Hol Holbrin. Um, I thought she was really, really good. She was seventh in the in the Guineas. Roger Varian's going really, really well. She didn't get home on soft ground then. And you know, seven furlongs fast ground is what she wants. Uh, and she gets it. She was a bigger price earlier earlier in the week. Uh, but I think six to one is still very fair. I've also had a couple of quid on last year's Cheshire winner. Yeah. Holloway Boy. I just thought he was very interesting too. We, we, I suppose we see him as being a disappointment because he didn't mm. win afterwards. And, you know, he was, he was such a cosy winner, but it was, a, it was a funny race to Cheshire. Was it 40 to 1, 80 to 1, 33 to 1? But to his credit, he actually finished second or third in four consecutive group races, including the Futurity behind August Road. Well, that's a, when, when I dug into the rest of his form, I thought, oh, that's a bit disappointing. That's a bit disappointing. Yeah, then you do actually, get to that Doncaster run. Yeah, it's actually, none of it is that bad. Yeah. And this will actually be the first time he's run on proper fast ground since the Cheshire. Yeah. Uh, so again, course and distance winner who won so easily last year at a double figure price. You know, again, officially rated nine pounds superior to the two to one favorite. Got to back him. So I had to have two cracks at that, that race. Okay. Yeah, uh, it does. It does have that feeling, doesn't it, of a, of a race you can have quite a few cracks. Yeah, so, yeah. Olivia Moraldi, yeah, like you said, will we'll love it. Um, Holloway Boy should love it. There was a couple of other horses as well, and I put it to you, Tom Siegel, that Ascot is an all-weather track, uh, as we uh, we saw from plenty of winners uh, to uh, today on the uh, uh, on the track. Uh, obviously, Akita Sushi, two from two. Capice had won on the all-weather. Uh, Shaquille won on the all-weather. Um, uh, Rhythm of Who's was two from two on the all-weather as well, and I do think that sometimes that. You know, the, the, the surface is similar-ish when it gets fast at Ascot, and there's two horses who will come off a strong pace here, have got all-weather form, uh, I thought were quite interesting. They were Kate, uh, Kwa Shamar and, uh, and Zoology, who, of course, does have the, uh, the beating of Kobe on, on one piece of form. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what Keel said. I mean, I, I do think kobe has got a little bit better chance than the likes of Saga and a few of the others, because I just think he's on a massive upward curve. Mm, he's yeah, minus. but he's 2-1, isn't he? That, that's just... Yeah, but Saga was the worst price, wasn't he? Saga was well, yeah, I suppose, but he, I suppose, but he went, he, he did go back out. I mean, I, yeah. I have yeah, a I mean, feeling, I have a feeling, Covey's not going to drift. Do you not think so? No, I have a feeling he's not. It's, it's Saturday, isn't it? It's going to be a Saturday Dottori yeah. um, multiple fest, isn't it? You can feel tomorrow in particular, everyone's going to be like, right, it's his last ever day at Royal Ascot. They're all going in multiples, aren't they? Okay, well then, then the, he's a, he is. A, yeah, I thought he'd be about three or four to one. If he's a two to one, then yes, he is. A, he's a shocking one. But I do quite like the horse. I have to admit, I agree. Mm. The form has got wiped out. Well, not only the, the fifth and the sixth, but the second and the third got wiped out in the Britannia. Uh, I mean, Royal Cape ran all right, but I think he was fifth or sixth. But he wasn't. He didn't like pull up any trees. So yeah, the form isn't there for him. I'm with Gills on Olivier Morel. Though I just like the fast ground ground for. Her. I think she's run three times on it. Uh, one was second to meditate in a in a group race yeah. in uh, Ireland, and the other two she won by seven lengths, and then she won by a mile also at York. I mean, the only other time she's been running on soft ground. She actually ran very well in the 1,000 guineas. I think she was fourth with a furlong to run, to getting the weight. So I thought she she'd go really well. Uh, just I know Keel said uh, Roger Varian's in very good form. It's just that the market knows the Roger Ver seemed to know to get Roger Varian the runners right. Sakir was. You literally couldn't give him away. Oh, today. absolutely, yeah, yeah. You know, you literally couldn't. And Eldar Eldarov was weak too. And and so I, 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 I tipped him like Keels did uh, her. Uh, you want was, you wanted to stay strong in the market, then, did you? You wanted to stay strong in the market. You definitely do. And if Enfid en Jar goes in front, I think I think our, our goose is cooked with, with that one. But uh, I get. Uh, Ross, your 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 outsider plays. We see that time and time again at Ascot. Come late, all weather form. I think it's to do. I'm not going to get. I'm going not going to go too boringly into the, the physics and the biology of it. But I think it just sort of suits the horses that can quicken the fast twitch horses yeah. rather than others. Ascot, and therefore maybe that's what suits the all weather horses too. So maybe that brings in all the ones you said. I do think Holloway Boy is interesting too because. Uh, he, you know, when he when he was second, third to August Rodan, he did travel really well, and he won did in the uh, Chesham. I know it wasn't a brilliant Chesham last year, but very easily on his debut. So yeah, I, I I'm with Olivier Miralda, but I'll probably sit and watch Holloway Boy win as has been the rest of the week. Okay, there you go. Olivier Miralda is currently a, a six to one shot then here at David Stevens. Eh? Uh, do you agree? Do you think all the, the Frankie horses are going to hold up tomorrow because it's uh, the Saturday punters will be out? Yeah, no question at all. I mean, we've seen the accumulators all week. And as you rightly point out, Saturday by far the biggest betting day of the week. Last chance to back Frankie at Royal Ascot. So, yeah, 
don't expect that Kobe to drift too much. Um, I'm with you on Qua Shamar, Ross. Not, I hadn't picked up on the all Ascot being an all weather course. I must confess I'd missed that, but I like that even more. But he wasn't beaten that far in the Irish Guineas. And at double figure odds, he'll do for me each way. And we are four places each way in this jersey. OK, there you go. So definitely a few angles to, uh, to take on the, uh, the favourite. Uh, FGR wins this, says Jonathan Sherritt uh, for, uh, for those. And uh, what else have we got? Uh, that's about it. Quashamar for me tentatively at Genghis 26. Uh, on to the, uh, uh, the big sprint of Saturday afternoon, uh, unless you're a, uh, more of a Wokingham fan, but uh, that's coming up very shortly indeed. Uh, but uh, someone's got the punting boots on because Wellington has been very well backed here. Four to one with Artorias. Highfield Princess uh, is 11 to two. Kinross is what people are saying after that joke. Seven to one. Sacred is seven to one as well. Rohan is 10 to one. <laughs> Elsa Hale is 14 to one. Oh, well done, Ross. I think, Ross, you said we've been doing this three years. That was probably the best joke in the three years. Well, I'm very impressed with that one. That was a good one. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I'm just warming up. Uh, but I'll tell you what, we just wait to the 2026 Royal Ascot. I am going to be knocking them out of the on park. On fire. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, to be fair, I think we'll all be on fire the way the planet's going. But anyway, uh, Big Invasion's also got a chance. Run to Freedom uh, quickened up well to win. Uh, the other day as well. Uh, Emma Artiana is a regular in these races. Uh, uh, Carl Dems the outside a lot. Uh, and uh, maybe the way the week's gone for a few of us, uh, the astrologist might well be a better way to go at, uh, than the form book. But um, really interesting renewal of the... Uh, of the oh, this changes every year, doesn't it? The Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee Stakes. I'm going to get the name right uh, for, for sure. Uh, but uh, Artorius uh, is, is represented last year's form, but also some... Uh, Australian form as well. We've got Hong Kong form. We've got French form. We've got Irish form. We've got British form. Tom, it's a, uh, it's a cracking renewal. It doesn't make it any easier, that's for sure. But um, you know, we, we've got pretty much every form line you could possibly imagine going in this. Yeah, we have. I mean, I, I, listen, they keep telling me Arturis is a different horse, but he was a bit of a, a bit of a lummox last year, wasn't he? I thought he was a late headway, headway monkey. He ran all right in this, but he wasn't. Sort of just picked up the pieces under a typical Spencer ride last year. I'm surprised to see him as short as he is. And the Aussies got wiped out uh, in the, not in the cricket, funnily enough, but they did get wiped out in the uh, in the King Stand. So I don't know. I, I'm keen to keep to take him on the old Beef Wellington. I wasn't sure about him either. I mean, they tell me that the that keeps beating him in uh, in Hong Kong or wherever he races is the world's best sprinter or whatever. But he's getting whacked so. I'm, I'm a big fan of his trainer, but four to one is plenty short enough for me. I thought Princess, I didn't like the King Stand. I didn't like the form of it, and I didn't like her performance that much. I thought she, I thought she would should have, thought she should have been able. Well, to you, I mean, you said it before that race, um, Tom. It, it, I'm not entirely sure Ascot's a track. I know she's won here, but but her her skills are much more suited to a Haydock or a, or a York. I would have said. Yeah, I mean, she's in 16. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I I I uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. I think they'll probably all come down the middle. It was good but last I, year, wasn't it? With the, with, with, yeah. When Naval Crown was down this near side rail, but yeah, yeah, I don't. I think they'll probably stay out the middle. I mean, the last race seemed to be won by those on this side, as did the uh, Britannia. Uh, so it could be, it could be, but I don't know. I, I thought we could take on the top of the market. Kinross is on the other side, trap one. He's, I'm, I'm his biggest fan, Kinross, and I have backed him. I backed him at twenty-five to one each way, uh, twenty to one uh, at this, a couple of weeks ago. Whether the ground, I don't think the ground's an issue, but I think over this trip it might be a bit of an issue. He, won't, he, ran, he ran really well on firm ground in the Breeders' Cup, so he's my favourite horse in training, Kinross. So I'd love to see him win. I just think trap one on this ground might be too much for him. So I like Sacred and Rohan. I don't see what is wrong with uh, uh, Rohan whatsoever. I mean, at the time of the Wokingham last year, was just a cut them. He was like six tenths slower than Creative Force, and he was carrying seven pounds more. It puts him right in there. We know. Ascot is his track. We know he's going to get a strong place to run at. Uh, we know every, the only slight question mark I've got about him is his preparation, because I know David Evans said before Salisbury that he had a hold up with him and he was getting him fit for Ascot at Salisbury. Whether he didn't run brilliantly at Salisbury, but yeah, but I mean, come on, I mean, come on, we've got we've got we've got previous with this horse, haven't we? In terms of we're not sure about the preparation, this, that, and the other, and. Oh, yeah. yeah, we don't know how he improved forty pounds in a handicap. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I think he'll, he'll be ready, Tom. Surely. Yeah, I, th I hope so. I hope so because I'm, I'm on him, and I, I just think 
Ascot horses for Ascot. He'll, he'll get a strong pace that he wants, and hopefully he'll pick him up. I am scared of Sacred, because um, I thought she was more impressive at Linkfield than I've ever seen her myself. I thought she, she looked really good that day. Uh, I can't believe six furlongs is an issue for her. I think people make too much of yeah. trips myself. I think if you can show that pace over seven, she was a fit in the race last year when I didn't think she 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 travelled like anything like the way she could, and she was still fit. So I, I think those are the two, my two against the field. I'd love Kinross to win, but I fear for him from trap one on fast ground. So I'm hoping Rohan, but I'm scared of Sacred. Okay, Rohan ten to one then, Sacred seven to one. Yeah, again, if you watch that race back, if you watch last year's renewal back, Artorius and, and, and Sacred in particular, they scrubbed along from early. They, they went a mm. right clip, but it kind of held up on the near side. Naval Crown was up there, and the you know you created force down the middle, and and Sacred and Artorius from the from the back. But I mean, if the Commonwealth Cup's anything to go by, it, it might be a bit more amenable to coming from a long mm. way back this year. Mm. Yeah, it, it could easily be, couldn't it? Yeah, I would like to say that. I need to have an argument with Tom over who is um, the biggest fan of Kimmos in the world. Because, okay, go for it. Because he's my absolute favourite horse as well. I absolutely love him. Um, I was backing him all last season. Uh, you know, it was, it was a real sort of success story for me, and I, I, did, I just uh, uh, I'd love to see him win. But I absolutely agree with Tom that Trap One and Fast Ground at six furlongs is probably you know doesn't play to his. Full strengths. Where is it? Where can, is it? Will can, I get I just, can I get him on this? Did you back Go him on. in the guineas? Did you back him in the guineas? No. Oh, well, there you go. I was on earlier. Oh, were you? Yeah, but oh, I abandoned him. Yeah, but I knew he wouldn't stay. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Fair yeah. Um, no, I, I mean, the two I came down to, I, I liked Wellington earlier in the week when he was a bigger price, but that's been nibbled away at and nibbled away at, hasn't it? And he's now joint favourite. I mean, that, like some Tom says, everyone says his lucky sway nest that keeps beating him is an absolute superstar and he has won four grade ones in Hong Kong and there probably aren't yeah. many horses in this field who could do that like you know so so I you know it, it, I prefer him definitely from Artorias but like Tom I came down on I came down on Rohan in the end and he's run out six times at Ascot he's won four times two Wokenhams and the only times he didn't win was in the champion sprint and in the first year he bled and last year he won his side quite quite comfortably yeah. like, you know so he's going to be there a thereabouts surely uh, be disappointing if he isn't he does come alive at the track uh, so yeah I think he's going to run very very well on a double figure price you know let's not forget that he has been in the first four in four group ones three of them away from Ascot yeah so he's he, only five as yeah, well exactly yeah feels like he's been going for, for yeah. years now yeah so and you know, some sprinters can keep on improving as well can't they so well, especially in this race I mean um you know, Dream of Dreams, for example. Was he was he seven when he yeah he yeah broke something like that when he finally finally got his head in front. Yeah yeah yeah. So I, I I do like him. Obviously there was you know a slight worry about you know the run last time and the prep and all that. But like you said, he was battered out of sight in his debut yeah, last year. Though, David so. Evans knows exactly what he's doing, and I'm yeah. sure he'll be spot on. Um, okay then, uh, Rohan is a uh, ten to one shot. Loads of others to mention. Like I said, I think the thing about Artorias so though is he was he was a I know he was an Aussie three year old, but he was still a three year old last year. He was he, you know he's a, he's a year older, and he might well. Have grown into himself. Other horses, uh, like you said, Sacred will love it. Alsa Hale's not out of this as well, is he? Uh, on uh, on his um, six field on Group One form from the Yeah, yeah I know. What's, that, what's going on? You know, it's just that they are running really poorly, aren't they? Yeah, um, mm. and just, um, I, I don't think he'll win, but I do think Run to Freedom will run quite well as well because he's from the, uh, the the family Twilight Sun, and Henry Candy's another one who gets his horses to improve as the uh, the years go by. So um, absolutely wide open here, uh, David. But um, like I said, a lot of money for Wellington. Uh, he'll be covered up. Uh, till uh, till late, preferably in pastry. Uh, what did you uh, <laughs> what did you make of this uh, this red hot sprint, David? You peaked with your Kinross joke. Just yeah, leave it there. Uh, I'm another one in the Rohan camp. Absolutely love him. Um, he's done me a favour in the last two Wokinghams. But as Kiel said, he also has that Group One form. And in Dave Evans, we trust that he'll be fitting well for this. Ryan Moore obviously rode him in last year's Wokingham. He's on this Hong Kong horse. That has been well backed. Uh, it's a real United Nations race. It's the most international field of the week. And the other one I've just got to have a few quid on each way is Big Invasion. Second to the Breeders' Cup winner, Caravelle, at Belmont last time in a grade one. Uh, the quicker, the better for this horse. He'll love it like a road. Jim Crowley's picked up a really nice spare ride. And he, he caught up with Joel Rosario earlier in the week, who rides his horse stateside. And Joel Rosario said he was very disappointed. He's had to go back to the States this weekend. So Jim's picked up a nice ride. He's around 18 to 1. And, and what did you mention? Run to Freedom is a 20 to 1 shot. And we are four places each way. But as I say, it's a real United Nations field. This 
the winner to come from outside Europe, so Hong Kong, Australia, America, uh, six to four from 11 to 10. Okay. Bingo. Hey, Ross, bingo. I knew it. I knew it was coming. The Corals boys mentioned the Breeders' Cup. Tick it off. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. It's, uh, I'd say it's a full house, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just you in, Tom. I hope it is, if you're shouting that loud. <laughs> uh, okay, Kale's the, um, the, 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 the... I want to See, now I want to call it the Diamond Jubilee, the Golden Jubilee. Now I'm thinking that I'm going to call it the QE2. The big sprint tomorrow. The big sprint tomorrow. Hopefully Rohan, yeah. Hopefully Rohan it is. Uh, Tom? Uh, well, I, I want Kinross to win. I'd love Kinross to win, but I'm, I think Rohan and Sacred tomorrow on the ground. OK. And uh, David Stevens. Well, at the risk of upsetting the Kim Ross fan club, I hope he doesn't win because of the man on board. I'm Rohan and Big Invasion. OK, there you go. And uh, oh, this is too hard. This is way too hard for uh, for, uh, for my liking, I think. So um, good luck, everyone. Uh, the uh, the 420 uh, is the the Hardwick Stakes, a mile and a half at the, uh, the distance for this uh, this group two, which might as well be a a Group 1, really, isn't it? Um, it's certainly a Group 1 field. Uh, Freewind is 2-1 uh, to one favourite uh, here for this. Uh, Hockham is 5-2. to two. Pile Driver is 6-1. to one. Changing of the Guard, 13-2. to two. Dover Legend, 7-1. to one. West Wind Blows, 20s. Uh, Ardacan, 20s. Grand Alliance, uh, 28-1. to one. Uh, Outsider of the bunch. And like I said, it is a Group 2 in theory, but um, it's often a, a springboard for a, a King George or... Uh, um, well, plenty of other races throughout the season, or uh, horses coming back to, to have another crack at, uh, at Ascot before they uh, go uh, globe trotting as well. And it is a cracking field, and, uh, and Free Wind is your two to one market leader. There's, there's a couple of reasons, obviously. Um, uh, Keels, there's, there's the, the Gosden, there's the Frankie factor, um, but her form's been given a, a right old boost already this week, and she, she does look good when she wins. Yeah, she's, her form's given a, a massive boost, Rogue Millennium winning uh, uh, earlier in the week. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the other reason, of course, is that uh, Hookham might not start. Yeah. Owen Burroughs uh, says, uh, it will be a shame if we can't run, but he won't be risked if the ground isn't suitable. Now, he hasn't run on good to firm ground since his debut. So I would have thought it's doubtful that he, that, that he yeah. even goes. I mean, he was a very short price favourite earlier in the week, but... They ran yeah. a rest today, didn't they? Although that might actually, given how he ran, that might have well, the same connections, but they might look at yeah. that and think, you know what, yeah, this is too fast yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, it's not the same connections, is it? What? It's not the same connections, is it? No, no, uh, what I was saying right, was yeah. that they, they also said that the connections of a rest said a similar thing, and yeah. he ran a yeah. stinker. So I think Owen Burroughs might look at it and go, actually, if that soft ground horse didn't operate on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And true Shan, obviously, but he. Yeah, exactly. But every time. But yeah, free win is obviously is obviously the one to beat. I've taken a little chance on pile driver. Um, a big fan of a horse, not quite as big a fan as Tom, funnily enough. But uh, 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 I'm a big fan of him. He won the King George last year. He's won a King Edward the Seventh. Uh, he hasn't run for ages. Trainer says he will come on and run, but he will be competitive, and he just loves it round there. And yeah, you know, Ascot horse six to one. Uh, obviously, be a bit short when Hookham comes out, but I think he's got a chance of. Uh, of upsetting free wind, he has got better form than free wind as, as things stand. Well, I mean, if if Hukum's not, I'd argue. I mean, uh, he, Tom obviously is a big fan, so he'd probably argue as well. But I'd argue that Pile Driver should be favoured if Hukum comes out on on form at the very least. Well, on form, on, on form, yeah, uh, it should be. But, you know, free wind's the the one coming forward and yeah. keeps on winning. Uh, and is ridden by Frankie and trained by the Gosdens. And Pile Driver's all. This, this is why Tom Pile Driver hasn't well. run for a year and. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you can understand why he isn't. But I mean, on, on form he's fab, yeah. Yeah, uh, but he is an Ascot horse, uh, Tom. And, and to be fair, part of the reason why you like Pile Driver is because um, he never gets the respect he deserves in the market, does he? He's always bigger than he should be on uh, on form. I lied. I'm a liar. Kim this Ross is your favourite horse, isn't it? Yeah, this is my favourite yeah. horse. Yeah, Pile Driver's <laughs> always been my favourite horse. Uh, he just, uh, it's just one of those, isn't he? Ever since he won on the All Weather, I've been a massive fan of his. He's just. He's just such a good-looking fella as well. I mean, I know I'm not really into the dark arts, but every time I'm, um, um, you know, you see him, he's just such a such a lovely horse. So I'd love him to win. The question is, is he, you know, is he going to be right for this? I mean, if Hookham comes out, it'll probably be a little bit short for me on the back of what he's won at, what prices he's won at in the past when people have been disregarding him. Uh, uh, but I'd love him to win. He's such a brilliant horse, isn't he? Uh, for William Muir and, and, and Mr. Grassic. I think I, th I just think free win might be a little bit too strong for him today, given their preparations. But I wouldn't rule him out in the King George if he turns up there and it's really fast ground. He's just a brilliant horse. Uh, 
Hookham's got the best form, but is he going to run? Three wins on a, on a, I actually backed her to win the arc last year, thinking that that's where the Gosdens might go until he, they, I think she, she must have had a problem because like, she, we didn't see her again after, after Donnie, I don't think, but I think she's, she's really good too. Uh, I think it's between the three of them, really. I can't see any of the others getting. Doville Legend's a nice horse, getting better. But I'm, I'm not sure. I'd rather pack a pile driver at six and him at seven, I think. And I think Free Wind will probably win, but I'd love pile driver to, to pile drive her in, if truth be told. Yeah, OK. Yeah, Free Wind 2 to 1. I mean, he probably pulled up stumps because that, that Haydock win was the one where uh, it, it was, um, well, it was uh, pretty lively, wasn't it? It was the one where Rab Havlin was badly hampered and, and, and forced his way through on the rail. That, so I, I don't know, she might have picked up an injury there, Tom. Maybe picked up an injury, but that wasn't. She had loads of entries at the back end last year, and just seemed that, yeah, maybe she was injured. Maybe she was injured, but uh, whatever. Uh, she also, I thought, because that was on soft ground, that Haydock form, I thought she'd be perfect for one of those back end uh, races in Art Weekend. But obviously, I was wrong. But maybe she was injured, as you say. Um, just a quick word on the on Tom on last year's uh, three year olds, now four year olds in in these contests. You've got Dover Legend and Changing of the Guard, of course. Um, I, I think the, you were saying that the, in particular, you didn't, fancy, you didn't think the ledger form was up too much. Do you think that the three-year-old group horses last year in general were a bit below par? Or are they going to get found out? No, I don't think so. I think I think Desert Crown and Westover are up to up to scratch, aren't they? Westover ran very well in twice this season. Only really up, John. I think I think they're definitely up to scratch last year's three-year-olds for sure. Just think these these ones here are a, are. A, step or two below the best ones from last year so but look we saw with Mostadaf earlier in the week mm. these races they're about the run of the race at Ascot they're about who gets the clear one who gets in the best rhythm who gets the smoothest run so you know you can't rule any of them out but I do think if you're just taking it on what we already know and on form the three at the top are, are, are well clear okay power driver is a uh, 61 shot but like we said we might see that market change power driver an all-weather horse of course as well so Anyway, David Stevens, uh, this might well change if uh, if Hookham uh, doesn't turn up. Uh, free win then will be uh, well. He should be even shorter. She'll be even shorter in the Dettori liabilities, and uh, by four twenty-five, you could be um, outside the job centre potentially. But uh, <laughs> free win two to one favourite here. What was your opinion on the Hardwick? I will say this is my final in the know. In that case. Um, while we're talking about favourite horses tonight, Jim Crowley says Huckham is his current favourite horse in training, but there is clearly a big question mark whether he'll line up tomorrow. They're not going to risk him, but off the back of a, a really good win in the Brigadier Gerard, he would clearly go close tomorrow if they uh, let him take his chance. Free wins is a worthy favourite, but she's only going to get short with Frankie on board. I pile driver. I'm with Tom. I love this horse. He did not get the credit. Yeah, he deserved for winning the King George. I think this is yeah, very much a stepping stone to the King George, obviously whether he's going to be quite ripe enough to win it. Uh, I'd take a chance on changing the guard. Won the three-year-old race, the Edward the Seventh, obviously, at the meeting last year. Has had that run at Chester uh, to put him right, hopefully. We've seen so many of Aidan's improve for that first run this season at the prices. I'm hoping changing of the guard can be another one. OK, changing the guard 13-2 to two, uh, in the Hardwick then. Uh, three more races of Royal Ascot 2023. Before we do, by the way, David, you've got a... Do you have a, we, we keep mentioning him, but you've got a price boost for Detroit, haven't you? Have we mentioned that? We have, yeah. We've got a couple. Um, two or more Frankie winners on his final day at Royal Ascot, 9 to 4 from 15 to 8. Three or more Frankie winners, 12 to 1 from 9 to 1. The last ever Royal Ascot Frankie de Tory. Good riddance to him. I don't mean that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll, uh, I mean, we're going to edit that very quickly. So don't you worry about it. We're chopping off that last bit. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's move on to the, uh, uh, the first of the, the final three at the Wokingham Stakes here. And uh, Arazio is heading the betting at uh, 6 to 1. Probe is 13 to 2. Kanjar is 10 to 1. Chipstead is 11 to 1. Mum's Tipple is 12 to 1. Apollo 1 is 12 to 1. Lethal Levi 14s. Bielsa is 16s. A bigger price as the rest. Loads of horses, obviously, you've got a chance in here. Uh, old favourites like uh, Summergan, the younger uh, horses like Flaming Rib, of course, was running the Commonwealth Cup at this time last year. Dream Composer's got good course form. Tan Marley gets backed every time uh, he runs. Uh, but I've taken the Tom Siegel approach here, Tom. And this is your... Well, not your... done any homework and found a 21 winner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, just, got, yeah, just looked, at, looked at the race. Immediately, my first thought, which was the best part of six weeks ago, when Orazio bolted up at this track, I thought, well, there's your Wokingham winner. 
and he's 6 to 1 favourite, but I think he I think he probably should be. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he's gone up £9, hasn't he? But the figures will tell you that he was worthy for, for more than that. The time was exceptionally good. The just a the concern is it's, mm -hmm. it's a totally different type of race. There were six or seven runners in that, weren't there? And it was on soft ground, and now you're asking him to win a 30 run a race on fast ground where you don't know where the draw is. So, uh, fully entitled. The, the two minute boys will definitely be on Arazio. Uh, my two minutes came down on Apollo 1 and One Lay Pin were my two minute selections. Apollo 1, just because I was, I just, he was a tracker horse of mine at Epsom last, last week. He's three pounds well in officially. He just looks like a better horse this year to me. Uh, he drawn wide on the outside at Epsom, travelled really well, was coming back at the winner. Just needs to settle. Hopefully Richard Kingscoke will drop him in. He made the running last year in this race. He was too keen. He wasn't beaten very far at all from being out in the middle. One of the ones that was best out in the middle in the race that they all came up the stands rail. So I think Apollo 1 will go well. And Wanley Pin just simply on the Mick Appleby form. You know, he's had, I think he had three runners at Ascot. He's had a 20 to 1 winner and he had an finish fifth, finished third in the King stand. And this Wanley Pin form on fast ground is basically he's unbeaten on fast ground for Mick Appleby. He was third in the Air Gold Cup. He was an unlucky third in the Air Gold Cup. The ground would have been a little bit too soft for him, but he was still showed he could handle these big field handicaps. And I just thought he's, he, he, you know, Mick had to run him at Nottingham last week to get penalty to get in. Now, normally penalties aren't great, but he actually went up more than his penalty for winning that race very, very easily. And obviously that's a different kettle of fish. But uh, I just thought... He loves coming off a strong pace. I can't believe Ascot isn't going to suit him. The Appleby horses are flying 20 to 1. Him and Apollo 1. They are my two minute selections. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, he's three from three over six furlongs on fast ground since joining McAppleby as well. So. Uh, Almost yeah. took him longer to explain it than how long it took to work it out, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 he did. Yeah, yeah. That was that was unusually in depth, actually. Uh, I was just trying to stop you having to talk about it, Keels. Keels well, loves a big field oh, handicap. I, can't. I do love a big field handicap. I've got to do it from memory now as well because my laptop's uh, crashed and uh, I haven't got my cable in here and the production boys aren't reading their emails, so I'm without it. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to crack on. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I had, would say it's not easy to remember what you took, but you probably no, exactly. wrote the piece well, two days ago, I, I didn't can't you? Even, I can't even remember drinking a cup of tea these days. So, so anyway, I am <laughs> hoping that Frankie Dettori has an absolute nightmare up until this race and that Mum's Tipple drifts, because I don't really want to back him at 12-1, to 1, but I do think he's got a fair chance. Um, if you take out that massive outlier of a two-year-old run at York, um, he was actually in career best form in the spring on the all-weather. Uh, run some big numbers, came. went up to a mark of 106. He ran once on, once on the flat afterwards, didn't run so well, but he's, he's down to, back, back down to 100 already, mm. uh, which I don't really get, unless they, unless they only put him up on the all-weather, which it doesn't make sense to me because his, his form on, on turf or all-weather is, is, is pretty much the same. Um, and I think he's got a big chance. I think he ran in the Buckingham Palace last year under a claimer, and he just went miles, miles too fast. Yeah. But he's a, you know, but he, you know, he's got plenty of toe. Uh, and I think he's, and I, I think he's, he's got a good chance. And I just wanted a little bit bigger than twelves. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so hopefully he'll drift. Um, but he might not, of course. Then I'll probably leave him, and then he'll probably win. And the other one was Kanjar. Um, yeah. Got beat at Hamilton last year, last time. Dwelt at the start. Uh, and I thought it was a really, really eye-catching run, and he's managed to get in the race and not pick up a five-pound penalty. Uh, had he have won? And I think, uh, I think he wants fast ground. He wants a strong pace. And you know, I just think he's, he's going, got he's got good form with uh, Lethal Levi from three or yeah. uh, last year. Um, and he won his novice here as well. Yeah, he, yeah, he won a novice here, and he, he was I think he was third to Lethal Levi in a big race at Newmarket, giving him yeah. nine pound. Uh, he beat Azure Blue and, at Ripon as well. Yeah, which is and he's, form. he's beat Azure Blue, who, you know, who, who won the Duke of York. So he's got some nice form for a horse running off a mark in the 90s. So, yeah, I think he's got a big chance. And the Sod's Law horse is, of course, fresh. Yeah. Who would have won me a small fortune last year because I had a double with Dark Shift and him uh, in the Hunt Cup and him in this. And he's in there at 18 to 1. And so that's the one that will probably win because I'm not having a bean on him. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but look, he won. He won his next two, though, Keels. I oh, know. Yeah, he won his next two. Yeah, at Ascot. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a time traveller, uh, but yeah. you just keep hitting yeah. the wrong buttons. The time traveller with a cretinous memory, obviously. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, if we if we need a new Doctor Who, uh, you're my suggestion. Thank you. So there you go. Um, <laughs> uh, other horses to to throw in your Amazon delivery man's here as well. By the way, with your uh, <laughs> with your plug. Uh, <laughs> uh, other horses to mention. Uh, like I said, I think fl flaming rib. Um, last year was, uh, you know, we, we placed at a Commonwealth Cup, fourth in a in a sprint cup at Haydock, and he's here uh, in the in the Wokingham, um, back down in handicap company after r banging his head against a brick wall in in Group One company. And one more mention as well for St Lawrence. This horse is, yeah. this horse has got to turn up at some point. He's got to turn up. He's another one. He was sixth in the King Stand last year. He switched to Archie Watson, drawn thirty, Holly Doyle. St La St Lawrence is going to be, he's going to win one day. Tom and he's now switched to a yard who know what to do with these horses. Yeah, he's very, very interesting. I was, uh, I did, forgot to mention him. Yeah, he's got two runs at Ascot, give him a good chance. He finished well in front of Apollo one in the Commonwealth Cup trial one year, didn't he? He was second to Rohan, I think, mm. in the Commonwealth Cup trial. Uh, so, yeah, he likes Ascot. If uh, we saw what Archie can do, I mean, he's had two winners and an unlucky second as well, hasn't he? So, Won the sprint, won the sprint handicap this afternoon. I uh, could easily bounce back, and she there's loads. They, I think it's three or four, and you know, Holly uh, straight on him, isn't he? First time up, so my guess is that he's going to run well. Okay, there we go. Uh, wide open Wokingham, David Stevens. It certainly is six places each way in this. Um, I can pass on a fairly positive mention from Kanjar from Jim Crowley. Of course, this horse was sent off favourite for the Air Gold Cup last year. Didn't work for him that day. Jim thought it was all just came a bit too soon for him as a three-year-old. But yeah, second up at Hamilton, hopefully put him right for this. The other one I like, Kings Lynn, was third in the race a couple of years ago. That came off the back of a big run in the King's Stand. Was second at Chester on his most recent start. Harry Davis taking off three. He's around the 18 to one mark. So there, that would be the one no for me. Way. There's no way you're getting champagne in that box, Mr. Stevens, if he wins. <laughs> no, that is true enough. That is. And anyway, it's, the, the horse you fancy is Juan Le Pan. Juan Le Pan. You kept butchering the pronunciation. Did I? It's oh, not. It's, yes. it's um, jo John Le Pan. It's John the Legs, if your name's Tom Siegel. <laughs> but, uh, uh, anyway. Um, he's uh, Tom will have to stand up in a minute because he's got Le Pans and Needles. But, um, <laughs> Keels, what did you like in the Woking Go? Uh, yes, it is Kanjar and Mum's Tipple. Okay, Kanjar and Mum's Tipple. Tom? Uh, uh, two minute selections were Apollo 1 and Mr. Pins and Needles, or whatever he's called. <laughs> Mr. Pins and Needles, which is my new nickname. For you. OK, fair enough. Uh, Arazio, St. Lawrence and Flaming Rib on the shortlist in the play spot for me, potentially. Uh, and uh, there's, there's, loads, there's loads of opinions. There's loads of opinions, but, but not enough time, quite frankly. Uh, but if you're, uh, if you're enjoying the show uh, or you, uh, you like clicking things on the screen, uh, then please do like the stream. That was a little poem for you there. Uh, the, uh, the last two races at Royal Ascot 2023, then, at the, uh, the Golden Gates Handicap uh, here. Uh, Canute is 11 a 4 favourite, not Breck 7 a 2, Ziriab 4 to 1, Line of War 6 to 1, First Sight doesn't go, uh, Local Dynasty is 14s with Have Secret, 16s is Larfy, uh, bigger price as the, uh, the rest here. There's been a, a big move uh, for the, the Ballydoyle representative, uh, not Brex's form has been given a couple of really good boosts uh, over the past 24 hours or so. Ziriab might well have won the Britannia, but uh, who needs to... Uh, claim on your anti-post bets when they go for another race. Uh, and, and Line of War's got a great chance as well after that impressive win last time out. But the Golden Gates handicap's a tough race. I'll start off with a man about to enter the pearly gates. It's <laughs> 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 poor, poor Keeley. What did you make of this penultimate uh, race? It could be a very warm handicap, <laughs> couldn't it? Um, I was a bit disappointed when Zeryab got in because I obviously fear him because i had been right, right on my list for the Britannia as well. But I've actually been nibbling away for a few days on Line of War, mm. uh, decent prices, and he's probably worked out to be my biggest bet of the week now. Uh, and I do think he's got a right good chance. That that muscle for a race, how he won that, I do not know because he got bumped at the start, stumbled, and then he was really free for two or three furlongs. And he came from last to first. The second and third were first and second pretty much throughout. 
Uh, and you know, it's very hard to come from last to first at Muscle if the pace, mm. you know, look, holds up for the rest of the race. Each of his last five furlongs, he was faster than every other horse, uh, and he won with a ton in hand. And I think it might have just taken a while for the penny to drop with him because obviously, you know, he was eleven to four for a Group Two won by Isaac Shelby last well, it, year. He went the other way. He's, it's often you get this horse, and he was almost too good for his own good, as it were, yeah. uh, in his first couple of starts, yeah. and then. Then obviously you then you then booted up in grade, aren't you? And he just found it a bit because he looked he looked fantastic on debut. And then mm. you know the, the two figures when he won first time the first two as a two year old were phenomenal. I thought, my God, this is a group horse. And then yeah, exactly. And it just it just didn't work out for him. Yeah. But he's, he suddenly put it all together. I'm not sure he's 100 percent straightforward, but at the same time, if he, if he looks at the way he carried himself at Musselburgh, but crikey, he didn't have to do well to win that race, and he's only gone up four pound for it, and. You know, he's running off a mark of 90, and he just could be a lot, lot better than that, couldn't he? Yeah. So Keep an eye on the 8.25 at Musterbra tonight, by the way, because the fourth's running The fourth's running, is it? Yeah, okay. So. Uh, no, he's, uh, I, you know, I, I, do think, I, I do think he's got a massive chance, and, yeah, I'm, I'm quite well involved with him. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Lion of War, then. Uh, Tom Siegel, what did you make of the penultimate race? Uh, I got so bored of watching horses getting hampered on the round track, I didn't really look at it. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I totally get. I thought I thought it was really tough. I thought the first four in the market there I couldn't spit them. So, well, actually, I could spit them. I thought that <laughs> Not Brett was the was the most likely winner. I thought it was interesting that Frankie is still riding him, isn't he? Last ride at Royal Ascot, and he's not switched to Ziriab. I don't know if you can. I don't know the rules, but I would have thought he was. I would have thought it's more like. I would, you know, for his stem, maybe he can't do the weight. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't really didn't really study it that far hard. But if uh, I thought he was just an impressive horse dropping back in trip, uh, but the draw slightly put me off because I like, as you know, we all like a wide draw in this. Lionel Ward's got a wide draw. If he can slot in and not lose ground at the start, his his race sort of depends on the pace, doesn't it? Because I think he, I think they found the way to ride him last time, uh, sort of holding him up and finishing with him and if they go it's one of those ascot races if they go really quick i think he'll come around a lot of them probably win but if, if they go slow then it's going to have a mountain to climb but uh the money for canute is obviously is obviously you know it's probably it's probably not not a mis mistaken i mean i looked at her, his race uh, i really thought the second had a really interesting race as well and they could be very good the only other one i'd throw in there was laugh who uh William Haggis had in the derby. He still has him in the John Smith's Magnet Cup. Uh, uh, so he was obviously one of the three-year-olds at the start of the season that he was pinning his hopes on as being a good horse. In fact, there were only, I think he had two in the derby. The one that won, the Desert Hero, the, Queen, the King's Horse that won earlier in the week, and this one. Uh, he didn't run too badly in the... Uh, Derby trial at Lingfield. Why Piero came out and ran really, and obviously won here early in the week. That was sort of clearly a get it ready run. He was weak and very weak in the market. So I could see him going well at a big price. But I want Lion of War to win for Keels now. That's the one. Lion of War. Lion of War, another son of Roaring Lion. Yeah. yeah. And he had three runners at Ascot, one winner, and the uh, two runners up this week so far. Yep. Yeah. And of course, it, it does look, I mean, it would be, it would be rather ironic if Frankie's job in his last ride at Royal Ascot was to set it up for the stable, mate, but It'd it might well work. happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Not, I'm going to say it quietly, Kiels, but he also is the sire of Dubai Mile, isn't he? Oh, yes, yes, oh, of course. Oh, yes, yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Forerunners. Uh, Don't remind me of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's why I said it quietly. <laughs> yeah, but um, just, just like I said, as long as he doesn't front run. But, uh, yeah, wide open. Like I said, Ziri Ab's going to haunt me because I, I did think he was... Him and Embesto were my Britannia horses and neither of them turned up for it. But he, he looks a really nice horse. Do, do, uh, is, do, do you know why Frankie's not riding him? That's quite interesting, that, isn't it? On his last yeah. ride at Rock Ascot, not riding for John Gosden or Judd Monty. I have no idea. Have no you're idea. not sweet? No. I don't know. I'll text him after, though, see, if he, um, <laughs> see what he says. But um, I think it's the tour. Anyway, I've been texting, but... He says it is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so ziriab has got a chance for the Gosdens. Uh, they've got another one in here, though, um, who might have a chance. I would definitely put a, an asterisk next to Obelix if you, um, if you might see a Gosden winner in the Golden Gates. Preferred Kin Ross. Definitely preferred Kin Ross. <laughs> Uh, David Stevens, the Golden Gates handicap. Uh, have you left your heart in San Francisco for this, or have you got some extra price boost for us? We are five places each way, and I too am a Lion of War fan. 
Uh, watching the look on Kills's face when he said he's quite well in on this horse. I can imagine how he's taken that news. But how he won at Musselburgh, as we've said, that was on good to phone ground, so we won't mind this. And yeah, the Dottori riding for Johnson rather than Gosden, don't know. Let's, yeah, anyone five minutes message in and tell us. Yeah, OK. Let's, uh, let's, get, him in, let's get him on Skype. Was anyway, he let's... already booked? Because he was a reserve, wasn't he? Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's move on. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> Queen Alexandra <laughs> stays. I, I literally, I have no idea, and I, I couldn't care less about the answer. Oh, uh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Queen Alexandra stays. Close us out the card, of course. Uh, Stratum is two to one favourite. Dawn Rising is eleven to four. Run for Oscar is seven to two. Falconate is seven to one. Typewriter is ten to one. The Grand Vizier is sixteen to one with Goshen, uh, and it's fifty to one. And uh, bigger the rest for this uh, Punchestown. Clo sorry, the Royal Ascot closer. Uh, Stratum is uh, two to one favourite. Then here for we've got Willie Mullins. We've got Joseph O'Brien with the J.P. McManus horse Keels. We've got Charles Birds. We've got Dermot Weld. They're all here for the closer. And we've got who have we got? We've got Goshen as well. We've got Goshen. Yeah, we've got Goshen. Goshen running on bone hard ground at Ascot on the flat. Yeah. And it's bonkers. It would be it would be the most Goshen result ever if he just decided this is what he's wanted all his life. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean he's good. he can't be winning on that ground, can he? Uh, Thirty seconds, Kills. What's the angle? Thirty seconds. The angle is I don't actually think Stratton's needed to be at his best to win this, but especially not last year. I think it's a better race. I think run for Oscar the last two times he's run on two mile plus on the flat. He's absolutely hacked up, including in the says, and I expect him to give him a right fright. OK, there you go. Um, Tom Siegel? Yeah, the money's been for Dawn Rising, isn't it? They're, they're, I think they're quite sweet on him. I preferred run for Oscar over the two of them, but I would give a word for one at a big price, the Grand Vizier, who was a huge eye catch. There haven't been many eye catches this week for me, but I thought he ran a, a remarkable race in the Ascot stakes. We know he likes Ascot. Uh, might run into a place at a big price. OK, there you go. And David Stevens, uh, what's, your, what's your last little offer up your sleeve? I have to stick with Jim Crowley. Uh, obviously an interesting ride for Charles Burns. Mm. Jim was pretty tight-lipped when I spoke to him this morning. But I think it's an obvious one, isn't it? He loves a long trip, this horse, and I'm sure he'll be cherry ripe for it. But yeah, the Grand Vizier Ian Williams always does well in these types of races. He's a 16-to-1 shot. OK. Hi. What was that? Was that was that Tom? Oh. <laughs> Voice from beyond the grave there from Tom. <laughs> I don't know. He's just um, sorry. He's just. Uh, he's, I don't know what that was. I just heard something very strange. Anyway, maybe it's um, maybe it's Tom's Wi-Fi going back. <laughs> right. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just You're watching yourself on a phone. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just go back and remember what his tips earlier on. But um, all right. Royal Ascot, two thousand and twenty-three. Keels, give us. Give us one. I'm gonna, we're gonna have a little video in a second. Give us one horse this week that will, that will, that hasn't won that will win. Harry Brown. Yeah, Without Harry Brown. Shadow is. of a doubt. Okay, Tom Siegel. Same question to you. Well, I didn't see Harry Brown because I was fiddling about with the sockets. But uh, <laughs> was that unlucky too, Keels? Oh, great. I wouldn't say it was unlucky. It, it, it was just on the well. I was just on the wrong side. He won his side easily, but I mean, he didn't even make the frame. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Um, um, same question to you, Tom. Blue stocking for me yeah. in the Riverdale. People talk about uh, the round track has been, they only talk about handicaps when you have these big fields on the round track. She got in, she just got mucked about from start to finish from stall three in the Ribblesdale. I think she might be a group one winning Billy over a mile and a half later in the Okay. Uh, I'll go for Nagano on the uh, handicap today. I thought that was a massive return. Really, you won't see him for another two years now, will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping he goes to Glorious Goodwood as he repeats the dose. Unlucky yeah, at that, Scott. Yeah, yeah. Bolts up at Goodwood. David Stevens, same question to you. Uh, the filly of Rafe Beckett's that was second in the coronation today, Remarkey, when she is when she learns to settle and is not quite so green, I think there's a decent prize in her. OK, lovely stuff. Uh, right, uh, here's a little competition, then we'll get the naps, and then we'll, uh, we're all round to, uh, to Tom's house because he's cooking his dinner. Just seen in that clip as well. Uh, the uh, can, can I back Malk at Carlisle still on that? Because <laughs> I think he's uh, I think he might well he might well be a bit of a certainty there. Um, so uh, right, naps then is it? 
final day of Royal Ascot 2023. I, I probably guess Keels, but what's the nap? Yeah, it's Lion of War. <laughs> Thought it would be. Thought it would be. Tom? They're waiting for bated breath for these, aren't they, after this week? They cannot wait for these. <laughs> uh, I am going for Apollo 1 in the Wokingham. OK, Apollo 1 in the Wokingham. David Stevens, the final nap, please. I'm going for Kwa Shamar in the jersey. All right, OK. Um, do I have a nap? It's too hard, isn't it? Saturday's too hard. Saturday's just too hard. Let's just hope Piledriver wins and our hearts will swell with joy. Uh, but thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for getting involved in the chat. You, uh, you cynical old bunch. Uh, that's for sure. And, yeah, I'm uh, glad I'm not reading all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, mate. I'll print it out. It's about 500 <laughs> pages long. Uh, and we'll see you for... Um... Oh, what's next, David? Next is the Coral Eclipse. But just a, 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 a shout-out tomorrow night. The 10 past 7 at Haydock is where I'll be ending Royal Ascot Week. Rockstar icon for the Coral Racing Club. OK, well, if two words ever described you better, David. I don't know if I've heard them. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks ever so much. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Oh, fair enough. Well, yeah, sure. No, bring it in. Let's all go. See you later. I'm off. <laughs>